All right, I'm gonna get started in just a couple of minutes. I just have to check on a couple of things. All right, yeah, there we go. Everything should be set. And for the night stream, I'm not doing anything particularly um, specific. I'm just doing some practice and drawing some random animals for fun, basically. So you won't really be here to learn anything or anything like that. I'm just having a little fun. Well, I mean, you may still learn something. There's always something to learn. Just wanted to show what I worked on today to practice. This is a creature that I created a number of years ago for a novel I was writing, and I plan to get back to at some point in the future. It's actually a mammal that's supposed to look like a dinosaur, sort of like a T-Rex in a mammal form. So I'm going to be drawing stuff like this tonight just to practice and build my skill again. I actually feel like a whole new artist because the last one that I did wasn't nearly this good. And this was another attempt at drawing the same thing from different positions. So tonight I'm going to try to do some more stuff like this and build my skill up a bit. Start by adding a new layer onto this. Then switching over to calligraphic brush strokes. And as you'll notice, I have the width set to 1.236, which is really small. And my color is going to be a dark gray, but because I'm using a graphics tablet, I don't have to worry too much about the lines being too dark because I can actually get pressure information from it. So I can do um, the rough lines if I want to or if I really want to emphasize something I can press down like that. Right. Okay, so let's get started. I like to start with the eyes. So that's where I'm going first. I'm doing the same creature that I did earlier today, but a different species. So they're part of a of a genus of mammals that look like dinosaurs. So this one is going to be a more slender model of, of that particular family. Not sure which direction they want this to face in, actually. Let me see something. These lines I'm doing are just rough. I can delete these after if I feel like it. I just want to get a rough idea of where this thing should be facing. Cool things to using Inkscape is that since I'm drawing vector graphics, I can select all this stuff and resize it later. So I'm not really worried too much about drawing off of the canvas because I'm not painting. I'm actually drawing um, points, and those can then be moved around as I need to. You could technically move your paint if you were in a like a program like Painter or GIMP, but I don't really like to use them per se when it comes to art like this. This feels more natural to me. And it gives me more control.
when it comes to mammals, you have to remember that their teeth usually tend to be differentiated. They don't have to be, but they usually tend to be, so I'm trying to give this some differentiations in the teeth at the back of the jaw so they look more like um, carnassials or premolars than the rest of the teeth, the canines and incisors. You'll only typically find um, canines and incisors looking like um, the well, like looking like each other really, and then the carnassials and um, molars, etc., looking similar in whales. And insectivores, I should also point out, they also have that condition, but most mammals don't. here. One of the things I forgot to do is add a crest because these creatures are supposed to actually have well, not really so much of a crest, it's more like a knob, but it's supposed to have a little thing right here in the middle of their skull. species actually has pretty long ears, so I'm going to try to draw it drooping down to the side like this. Okay, just a minute, folks. I want to turn on something on my computer, so just give me a second.
Alright, it should be back on now. It was just turning on something there on the computer. Sorry about that. some details on this area here that can be a little bit tricky but I'm trying to practice as I said so I'm gonna go for it I'm using some very light pressure on the tablet I may still need to change the color though because it's still coming out a little too dark
have just made this part here a little more concrete. Better now? I think it may just have been me speaking kind of quietly myself because I'm also listening to something at the same time, so that's probably what happened. thing with mammals you have to keep in mind is when you're doing their skin or hair or anything remember that they are hairy most of the time some mammals do have smooth skin but most mammals that have um, skin with color on it will usually have hair so you usually have to try to remember to give the impression of hair which is something I usually like to try to do by going back and forth on the edges or sometimes I if I want to do a straight like over here, I can just do this and come down. But that takes a lot longer to fill in, so I don't always use this method. When you're using a skateboard, there is a trick you can use with calligraphic lines, which is to turn on stroke. But if I turn on stroke, the problem is the lines are bigger than they really want them to be, so I'm not going to use that method this time.
turn the top lane to a safe because I'm trying to get better um, handling, if you want to call it that. these edges are going to be filled in. I just need to get the basics in place. Alright, I'm going to come back. Oops, went too far. Let me zoom in because it's actually easier if I zoom in. One of the things I find with art is that perspective makes a big difference because they like, zoom in like this, it doesn't look nearly as cool as it really is. So sometimes you need to move away before you can actually see what you're working with. Alright, let's go back to full page. And there we go. Looks pretty good. not quite sure yet what this thing is looking at or what it's trying to eat or maybe it may not be trying to eat anything maybe it's just trying to look at something but I haven't decided yet this around a little bit. This is kind of random, but it just occurred to me. One of the reasons why you don't see a lot of uh, mammals with long necks is because all mammals have the same number of vertebrae in their neck, which is seven. So you're not going to see many giraffes walking around. Well, many giraffe lake creatures walking around that are mammals because to get such a long neck, your vertebrae have to stretch. So that's why even in this case, I made a creature that looks like a dinosaur, but the neck has to be relatively short. But you will see that there's some, I may draw some later, there's some in this same group that I created that actually look kind of like real dinosaurs with really long necks and all that. But even so, because they're mammals, they would still have to have seven vertebrae in their neck, which would mean that they can't really move them that much.
thinner lanes are on this part of her face. a bit though. By the way, if this music is getting boring, I can always change it because I just kind of chose something random but new this time. I wasn't sure what it was going to sound like because I forgot to look for music beforehand and then just went with something I could find quickly. Challenge is I always have to make sure that there are no copyright claims against the music. Even though I choose um, DCMA free and all that stuff, or royalty free music, you would be surprised at just how many of those things on YouTube are not copyright free. People don't do their homework. some detail around here on the bottom jaw make it look a little bit more like a mammal using some swift strokes around here to give the impression of fur
sometimes ape skip can be a little bit slow to respawn and it can get in the way of drawing. I'm not sure what causes that but it can be a little bit annoying because I'm trying to get some details down here that require this to respawn in perfect timing and I'm not sure if it's just my computer or if it's just the program. Okay, that looks pretty good. I still have not decided what she's looking at. So how about I draw a tree? This here is going to be a fruit of some sort, not necessarily a real fruit, but at least something recognizable. eyes are actually, well her eye because I can't see the other one but the eye is actually looking up there so I'm actually going to fill this in some more.
as you can probably tell, when it comes to art, I'm a bit of a perfectionist, even when I'm just practicing. Which is probably something I should work on a bit, but hey, that's just me. I like to go through every detail and make sure it's just right. When I'm using a drawing style like this, I tend to darken certain areas to simulate shading because obviously I'm not using color and I'm not using lines that are solid, so I darken the areas where I want it to be more shaded to look like if there's less light getting to that area. Still have to be careful though because sometimes you may end up going outside of where you intend to go. And then you have to reshape what it is that you're working on. You don't want to do too much of that and then lose the whole thing. So you have to be very careful. That's one of the reasons why I'm practicing this. So I can get a lot better at it. Arms are one of the hardest things to do, so I'm really going to need some practice with this. Especially when it comes to drawing people. It really gives me some challenges. At least if you want it to look realistic, it can be a little challenging. The reason I did these fingers down here before I did the wrists and the rest of the arm is because I usually like to figure out where the end point will be. That helps me then to fill in the rest of it much more accurately. It's not too bad. A little too long around this area, but not too bad.
for the sake of perspective, this one over here is going to be facing us. The one next to it is facing almost forward and then the one behind it will be facing out in the other direction. So I'm drawing these two on the extreme ends shorter and this one longer. And I'm going to try to give it some degree of curvature to indicate that they're actually pointing in a particular direction. Still could be a little better, but hey, not too bad. The difference between a mammal's tail and its neck is that you can make it as long as you want, but to signify that it's a mammal, I'm not going to make this quite as long or as thin as a dinosaur tail. So I'm going to give it a kind of a thickened ending and keep it relatively short. So for a creature like this, its tail would have to be pretty heavy in order to balance. Whereas with dinosaurs, their tails would just be relatively long in order to keep their balance. They would have a longer tail. It'd still be heavy, obviously, but a longer tail with more uh, put into the length of it than into the width or into the thickness of it. Whereas for a creature like this, they decided to differentiate them by having a pretty thick tail that isn't quite as long proportionally as it would be on a dinosaur. And if you're wondering, yes, paleontology is one of my favorite subjects. I wanted to be a paleontologist, but where I live didn't make that possible. And I don't really mind because, quite frankly, it's not the most exciting job in the world, and I much prefer what I'm doing now. I would have just been searching the world looking for fossils and doing crunching numbers all day and all that. Not my cup of tea, so... I'm much happier doing this than going out into deserts, digging up bones, and then going into a lab to crunch numbers to put a bunch of speculations in a book. Because that's really all you're doing. We don't actually know half of what we claim to know about all these creatures we find because you have to infer quite a bit. I know that will probably get some people mad, but hey, <laughs> it's, it's the truth. I remember when it was growing up, dinosaurs were portrayed, they started to portray them as having feathers because there was this theory that birds evolved from dinosaurs, but then I remember the sauropod dinosaurs, well yeah, it was the, not sauropod, sorry, the dromaeosaurs, it should be sauropod dinosaurs had um, 
lizard shaped hips and then all of a sudden about 10 years ago they started switching them and making them have bird shaped hips and they were saying you know I do remember that the fossils you actually found aren't shaped like that so I asked a number of people over the years if they remember and no one answers because everyone is just going along with the good old game of pretend you didn't see that that's one of the other reasons I'm glad I didn't actually become a paleontologist because I can't lay very well and I can't pretend very well either I can act but I can't pretend That isn't to say that all paleontologists are layers. I'm not trying to say that. I'm just trying to say there's some things that kind of bug me because they say, okay, we know this is speculation. We know this is consensus. Can we just admit we don't actually know what we claim to know? That, that's the world for you. Everyone just has to go along with it because, you know, money and popularity because half the time you're not even paid. I made her head kind of small for her body but this is practice so I'll get better at it. Her head should be bigger and her neck should be a bit longer especially for this species. And her jaws should probably be longer as well. Although, to be quite frank, I don't think it's too bad. They should be a little bit longer. part here is not too perfect but I'll just live with it. That's the whole point of practice, it doesn't have to be perfect and I need to remember that practice is in order to get better, get perfect. Well I shouldn't say get perfect, just to get better. So I'll live with the imperfections. kind of funny too because I'm pretty sure anybody else looking at this would be like, wow, man, that's so cool. And me, I'm looking at all the errors and the mistakes and all the bad proportions and all that stuff that no one else can see. It reminds me of when I was younger and playing the saxophone and I played at church the first time ever. I wasn't playing with the band, I was playing with my brother. He was playing a bass clarinet and I thought that I was making like the most terrible mistakes which is screeching because there's a way you have to blow the saxophone you can't just blow into it with your mouth you have to blow into it from your diaphragm and I made a little mistake at a point and even in my mind I was thinking that I had stopped and I had kind of like you know looked around in embarrassment and when it was done everyone was like whoa that was so wonderful and I didn't notice anything I didn't notice you stopping or anything like that and all the while I'm going, what are y'all talking about? Because I'm pretty sure that I stopped and looked around and did all sorts of stuff and no one noticed. Even the most critical people who would have taken opportunity didn't notice. So it just goes to show you, have a little more faith in yourself because sometimes your perspective is way off.
you know, it's funny, Ikari hit this creature, and this is a female, by the way, but I never actually thought to think about seeing as these are mammals. Where would their babies nurse from? That never did cross my mind. It's also kind of interesting, and I know this is probably not everyone's cup of tea, but I personally, being a creationist, I believe this stuff is genuine. Also based on the fact that, well, okay, that would take a long time to explain, but anyway, let me just jump straight into it. The Ica Stones, I believe there are quite a number of fates to them, and that is true, there are quite a number of fates among them, but there are some that are indisputable. And in some of the ones that are indisputable, there's a very interesting portrayal of dinosaurs breastfeeding, which doesn't seem to make any logical sense. But, I often think about the fact that although dinosaurs are not mammals, there's so much we don't know because we don't have soft tissue. So what if it is possible that they actually did? And people who, I personally believe people did see them, and even in some parts of the world they're still reported as being seen and providing parental care. I often wonder if that wasn't really possible, because it is a real possibility that at least sauropods, which are the ones they portray as doing this, could have done that. Sounds weird, and from what I know about reptiles obviously, I mean, just doesn't add up, but who knows? Which again goes to show there's so much we just don't know, and so much we should just leave to wonder and, and I wouldn't say chance, but just leave our minds open a little bit more and not be so arrogant and think we know everything. I think the world is a much better place when we just accept the fact that we really don't know. It just occurred to me this is the first time I've actually drawn this particular species in full. I've only ever drawn the head and torso and the arms, but I never actually drew the full animal. So this is a pretty fun experience. Alright, I need to take a look at the reference image of this, which I would have drawn by hand on paper a number of years ago. So just give me a second, I'll pull it across the screen too, so you get to see it. So this one over here, this is the one I'm drawing right now. This is the one I drew earlier today, and this is the third species that I didn't bother to draw today. The two of these are pretty similar, and this one is smaller and much more slender than the others, as you can see. And the story that I was working on, the largest of them, a family of them escape and actually end up causing some trouble. They don't kill anybody or hurt anybody, but they cause some trouble and then um, I think it was that some of them had gotten, or one of them had gotten attacked by another one, something like that. It was kind of like my own Jurassic Park. It was inspired by Jurassic Park and it was meant to be a much more extensive Jurassic Park where people just go wild and create everything they can think of, but I never got around to finishing it. Maybe one of these days I'll actually return to that story and see what I can make of it.
this. One of the cool things about the Escape by Light, I don't have to draw this same thing over and over again. And since I'm not painting these are actual objects, I can duplicate them and move them around and create a bunch of fruit. Let me turn off Snappy. cool is that? They don't have to try it again, just duplicate it, rotate it, and it looks as though they drew two different fruits. Since she's carnivorous and these are fruits, I'm going to draw something for her to eat in the tree that she can't get to. So that's an antle. Too thick. Let me try that again. Also, I'm going to zoom in so I can draw at a closer level. I can actually see what I'm doing better. Start with the nose. I'm going to use a different perspective than what I was going with just now as well, so I'm going to make the nose a bit wider. This is going to be a little bit of a challenge for me because I don't usually draw head on. So I'm going to try to see if I can get this done. clue what this thing is, I'm just winging it. If it looks really weird, don't worry because it's not really meant to be anything that's real or imagined. It's just some random creature. I 
I'm really more so focused on the perspective than on the actual creature. Because I need some practice drawing things head on. Or at least from an angle like this, I should say. what this freaky looking creature is supposed to be other than food for <laughs> our hungry lady down there who's trying to get it. thing because it really isn't anything specific. But at least now she has something to try to eat. Even if it looks absolutely weird and freaky, at least it exists.
am going to move on to drawing something else shortly. Just trying to figure out why is my system moving so slow. It was one of those processes that trace through in the background without asking just to upload a kernel error and uses your entire CPU. I don't know why they do that. But anyway. Alright, this is Mamato Tyran Thunder. actually gonna try something else no it's just a human. I've been trying to draw human faces recently a lot more because I've never really been good at drawing people so I want to practice that. Even if it's just to develop my own style that's what I'm trying to do. If you want to see some I've done recently I will actually show you. This is one of the characters from the story series I'm currently working on, which is Trapezium. It's a rough character design. I'm not the one who's supposed to be doing the final character designs. I have a friend working on that, but I just sometimes take the opportunity to do some practice and send them off to him and then he'll perfect it and make it actually look like it's supposed to. So this is not perfect, obviously, but I was taking some time to practice on this. Here's another one, a villain, who will not show up for a while. And finally, there's this guy, who also doesn't show up for a while. These are just random sketches of a rough idea that I had in mind. Nothing particularly spectacular. But I'm trying to get better at it in general. So I'm going to try a little something. See what I can come up with.
trying different techniques recently of just doing rough outlines of what I want to go with and then see where that goes from there. Sometimes I may even just scrap the entire idea I have in my head and go with something new based on what I start with. But it's given me a good idea of how to draw people in general. I'm actually beginning to gain some confidence, feeling pretty good about it. I have the basic outline completed, now I'm going to try to focus on some details. One of the hardest things to do is to get the nose right. That's something I really need to work on. In a rough sense, this is what Trapezium will look like in his um, superhero identity because he wears a hoodie and he wears a mask around his face and a shirt inside of his jacket.
Obviously this is not the final design. My friend is working on that and he'll do a much better job than I would. Because he actually has some skills when it comes to drawing people. I'm just trying to find my way basically. And for me this is a, a healing process because many years ago, many many years ago, I was laughed at off the face of the planet because I wasn't going to drawing lessons and learning how to draw anime characters which is what everyone else was doing. And funny enough, all of them stopped and I still kept going. I just kept drawing creatures. They stopped drawing altogether or moved on to other things because it wasn't really their skill and their talent. Well, not their skill, it wasn't their talent. It was a skill they picked up by learning from teachers at art school. But this was something I was born doing, so it's just natural to me. I just need to practice when it comes to drawing people. Another lesson I take away from my life experience, if you believe in something, keep at it. wasn't too bad. You know, if I can only get a face drawn from the side, that would be so good. I'm actually getting better at these angles and I feel pretty good about that. I still have to practice doing this with solid lines instead of sketching because I haven't really been drawing with solid lines in a while. That used to be my style exclusively. I didn't want to get back to it one of these days. But I'm finding that sketching is helping me to really figure my way out when it comes to drawing, so not too bad of a move to make for now. I'm gonna put him using some laser vision or something. Not to give too much away, but he does have laser vision. He has quite a number of powers. If he were to go up against Superman, 
at full strength, then he would really give Superman a run for his money. But when he first starts off in his story, he's not nearly that powerful. By the time you get to Volume 3, yeah. If he went up against Superman, Superman would come away with a big bruiser, <laughs> trust me. But he'll have to go through some things in order to get there. is telekinesis because he is telekinetic he is also super strong but he doesn't need to use his super strength to lift most things plus one of the things that they don't often show in comic book movies if you have super strength and you lift a plane for example you're going to punch a hole through the plane it doesn't actually work like most movies portray it because you can't just go around lifting stuff with super strength without also having the same force that exerted back against you. So you need something extra like telekinesis to be able to lift buildings and mountains and planets and that kind of stuff. Which is what I decided to give Trapezium so he can lift all that stuff using both his super strength and his telekinesis at the same time. Or he can just use either one depending on how big the thing is or whatever it is that he's doing. But his super strength is mainly for going up against other super powered beings. Because, let's be honest, lifting stuff with super strength isn't always cut out to be in the movies. And I wish, by the way, that more movies portrayed that. The only place I've seen that really portrayed was in Invincible. But, to be quite frank, I'm not a huge fan of the show because the violence in it was over the top. It was really overkill if you ask me. I mean, I got the point they were trying to make, but still, overkill. But at least they were able to portray that if you're trying to lift a building that's falling on a bunch of people, those people are gonna die. It's not gonna work like that. Superman, I don't know how he goes around lifting buildings. Except that in one rendition in DC Comics, they decided to say that he has a force field that extends around everything that he touches and blah 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 blah. 
and then they retconned that, and then it kind of didn't, and then it was like, do y'all even know what you're doing? Funny enough, I've never actually read comments, I just know this stuff because I study it, kind of like how I study everything else, but I've never actually read a comment book. And when I say a comic book, I mean from DC or Marvel. I've read some from, like, Archie comics. <laughs> I've never actually read a DC or Marvel comic. Maybe one day I will, but I haven't. Unless you count, like, daily newspapers, Spider-Man comics, those Marvel comics. I don't even know if Marvel was involved directly in those. Another area where I'm kind of struggling drawing stuff is with shoes, so I'm trying to work on that as well. I often think to myself, though, there are probably some people who would watch me doing this and think, Wow, you're so good! And meanwhile, I'm thinking, I suck at this! Just goes to show you again, perspective is so important. And always remember that no matter how low you think you are, somebody else is always looking up to you. At every level in life. I figured, hey, why not have him throw a car? Just because. Or better yet, I could turn this into a pickup truck. The spoiler alert, there is actually going to be a scene where he does throw some vehicles around, but it will not tell you what kind. And yes, there are scenes where he does it deliberately. There is also a scene where it's completely accidental, but again, not giving away why that happens or anything. Just letting you know it does happen. But stuff like lifting cars and throwing cars and that kind of stuff, child's play. Because Trapezium is more, of a, more or less a Superman level character, if not even higher than that, when he comes into full strength. So throwing cars around is a joke, but it's impressive to small minds. <laughs> Just kidding, it's, it's, it's still an impressive feat to throw cars around, but there are other characters in, in the Trapezium universe who can do that just fine. 
so he has to be a lot more powerful than that. says behind him that's his girlfriend she also does become a hero eventually you would have seen her earlier funny thing in drawing with in Inkscape skip is that once you zoom in everything begins to look kind of bad <laughs> so you really do need to make sure that you stay zoomed out when you're in Inkscape. At least if you're drawing like how I'm doing right now because I'm sketching, I'm not really drawing in the conventional sense like I normally do. Using solid lines and that kind of stuff, so things can look kind of bad when you zoom in. to get these details like I want them from this zoom level, especially seeing as I'm sketching.
actually did her leg. Because it's not really all that important. I just wanted to have her in the background. Supporting her boyfriend while he throws a car. For no reason. Because every girlfriend wants a boyfriend who throws cars around for no apparent reason. Fortunately, my character in this trapezium universe doesn't do that. Uh, yes, I do appear in my own universe. Kind of like an easter egg, but um, not in the early part of the story, so you won't meet me for a while. But my character doesn't throw cars around. He will do some other stuff. I won't give away what that is. But suffice to say, he's pretty much on par with trapezium. And in some ways more powerful seeing as you know, the writer of the story is in the story, so you can do whatever he wants. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, that's all I'll say about that. But he doesn't throw cars around. I guess his girlfriend will be slightly disappointed to know that. But, um, <laughs> Trapezium does throw cars around. His girlfriend likes it. To an extent. Another thing I'm trying to do here, I'm trying to learn how to do black hair correctly, especially locks. I have locks and it's kind of important to get our hair right. Most people don't even bother to try. At least most of the artists that are out there don't bother to try with black hair. They just give us generic stuff and they want to change that. call this stream off soon because it's getting kind of lit and I don't want to keep everyone up all night. But I am enjoying this. I do love sometimes just taking time to just draw at random and practice, hone my skills, add to what I already know. If you learn something from that, that's cool. If you don't, that's no problem because I do try to focus a little more on teaching in my other streams and I am working on some actual instructional stuff for YouTube so don't worry about it I will get around to teaching at some point in the areas where I'm strongest of course the areas where I need some work and still trying to put in some practice because I believe everyone should always be looking to learn wherever you can that he actually has his telekinetic shield or field I should say around this vehicle. You wouldn't actually see it if it were real life because he's just moving things with his mind. 
nothing to see, <laughs> you know. But if it were in the movies, I'm sure Hollywood would find some way to make telekinesis visible, other than just having things move. I mean, I get it, because it does look pretty cool in movies, but sometimes I like a little more grounded realism where it's like, you don't need to see a bunch of lines coming out of stuff and electricity going everywhere unless he's like, actually using his electrical powers. Just show stuff moving. Gives everybody something to wonder about, like, how is he doing that? here because it's nearly 10.30. I hope you enjoyed this stream. I did. I love taking time and practicing. So I will see you all soon again. Probably either tomorrow or next Monday. Uh, well, yeah, maybe next tomorrow or next Monday. We'll see. We'll see what happens. I don't really have a set schedule because my times can be kind of iffy, so we'll see what happens, but I will let you know when my next stream is, and we'll see what I do. I may continue doing some practice, or I may go back to something more concrete, more structured, depending on what I feel like doing, and also if there are any requests. So you can follow me if you haven't, on, twi on both Twitch and Twitter, and also on YouTube. It's the same handle everywhere to Twitch, YouTube, and Twitter. And I hope you enjoyed that. See you next time.